Hello guys, you are welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we are going to be learning how I was able to retouch these outdoor images in just a few clicks with simple tricks and tips in Photoshop. So we are learning how to retouch your outdoor uh, photo images and be able to get amazing results using your Photoshop. Without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. All right, so the first thing I did was that when I brought the image into Photoshop, I had to select the background and darken down the background a little inside my camera roll. So if you open your mask area, you are going to notice that the object is separated from the background. So if I turn it off and on, you will notice that in the original background, the background was so illuminated because uh, uh, the sun was quite high. So what we did was that we exposed for the object properly, making the background to get overexposed. So while inside our camera roll with the mask selected, we were able to as well dial it down to an extent so that it gains that balance in luminosity. And that was basically what we did. Every other thing was just minute. We just had to move a few sliders to get things where we wanted, to, wanted them to be. So this was how the image was looking straight out of camera. All right. I don't know why that is not showing us. All right. So this was how the image was looking right straight out of camera. So this was what we got when we did some adjustments inside our Photoshop. So inside our camera roll rather. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started with how the retouching of this image was able to be done. So first of all, I'm going to press open. All right. So once you are you have your object opened up in Photoshop, I would advise you crop. So for me, I crop 8 by 10. So I'll just place it here and as well just drag stuff up this way. I wanted her to just, you know, give her a little room towards the right side of the frame. So once you have this, you can as well make a selection of this whole area. Just like that, go to Edit, go to Content Aware Scale, hold your Shift and you just be able to fill up this area. Okay, so we are done with that. So the next thing I would, I did on the image was my frequency separation. So I'm just going to load up my 8 bit. Make sure your Gaussian blur is set at the reduce of 3. All right, so pick up your mixer brush tool and immediately start brushing over your object. But make sure that sample all layers are not checked. So you can decide to turn off your high frequency so you can see exactly where the colors are falling and you'll be able to work with them. So while working with frequency separation, the rule is simple. Do not paint your highlights into your shadows and do not paint your shadows into your highlights. So without wasting much of your time, I'm going to try to speed it up a little just to make sure I don't waste all your time watching me or listening to me do, a, do frequency separation on my object. So I'm going to see you soon. All right, so once you're done with your frequency separation, the next thing you would want to do is to separate your object from your background. And to do that, I'm going to match this all up. Then I'm going to make a selection of my subject. Very important, easy, easy. All right, so once you have your object selected, right click, select inverse and just make sure you modify your selection. So for this case, I'm going to be working with this. This seems perfectly fine. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my background. Very, very important. Right click on the object, go to cut. So it's going to cut out your object from your background. Then reload the selection of your object. Go straight down to the background, go to filter, go to not filter, go to select, go to modify, go to expand. You can decide to expand by 10 or 15. Press OK. Then right click on the object and go to fill. Click on content aware. All right, so once you have that filled up, you can now deselect your selection. So if you look over here, you'll notice that we'll have our background entirely on a new layer with our object entirely on a new layer. That means we can decide now to introduce some blurring effect to this background using our tilt blur or any other blurring uh, 
tool that you want to use but for the purposes of this video we'll be using tilt blur because of the way it does its blurring with gradation so i'm just going to drop one point over here so just go to your filter go to blur go to tilt blur the moment you come over to the tilt blur you are going to see this box over here then drag this all the way down. So everything within this space are going to be 0% blur. Everything within this space down to here is going to be moving from 1 to 50. Everything after these dots is going to be 100% of the effect. So you just take it up as much as you want to take it. For this one, I'm going to leave it here. And I'm, I might decide to add some foreground to it or leave it. So I just blurred it straight up and I like the result I am getting. So I'll just press OK. I allow it to load up. So once you've loaded it up, now it's time to manipulate or to uh, darken your background a little and add some colors to it. So what I would do is that I will go to hue and saturation, clip it to my background and just change the hue slightly to see exactly uh, the colors I have. Then I'm going to reduce saturation of the, of the master a little just to make sure we we'll get something very close to that, then press OK. Then we'll go straight to color lookup table. Come all the way down. And check the one that suits your image perfectly. So for this image, we are going to be using uh, tension green. So all you need to do is just to reduce the opacity. I think that didn't work. Let's find something. Else. I love the teal orange i love the teal orange so this is the before this is the after we can as, as well try one more color look up all over this ones let's see the one that comes out finer i love what i have here so i'm just going to reduce the opacity just like that so you see that we are getting very close to the sampled image we showed you in terms of color although we still have some colors in the background that are popping which is more like towards the yellows so i'll just go straight to the yellows and just reduce it so you just see the way it aligns into what we are trying to create so now let's color grade her skin so i'm just going to go straight to color lookup i'll go to load color lookup 3d I'm going to change this to 3DL. Then we are going to be working with this chocolate over here. Of course, we are getting it for free in this particular video. We are getting it for free. So I'm going to hide the color lookup, make a duplicate of my background and uh, create a mask for it. Go to select, go to color range. By then I have my skin selected. I can now decide to increase the fuzziness for the areas that didn't get it properly. All right, so once you do that, I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to use this mask to replace the skin tone mask. I can now delete this. So you see that the skin tone is really, really nice. So we just have to reduce it a little. Then lastly, I'm going to go straight to my photo filter. So one of the things I love doing is that I love applying cooling effect to my images just to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to reduce this to this extent so once you reduce it there are a few things to do because that was why i had to match then open your curves i noticed that the image is slightly too dark so we'll just use our curves picked up our brush and just brighten up some areas in the image so once you are done with that match your layers up together make a duplicate of that go to filter go to liquify so this is where we take care of the body shape this is where we take care of the body shape the body shape you are seeing in the picture this is where you have to achieve it so the first thing i want to do is that i want to make her gain some more hips so to do that i'm just going to go straight to my uh push left i'm going to go to my push left reduce it and start pushing gradually so you notice that gradually gradually uh she's beginning to gain her hips back all right then i'm going to uh, bring this area down a little do the same thing with this area i just bring it down a little then you all right so i think this area is quite bulging out so i'm going to reduce that as well 
beautiful. So let me zoom out so that you can see what we've done. This is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. So I'm just going to press OK. And the last thing we are going to be applying on this image is our done for you retouch action. Just to give it some extra kick and extra look, we're going to be running our done for you retouch action on this image. So I'm going to come to done for you, press play, put my radius at two, and allow it to its magic. Okay, beautiful. So let's look at what we've done. This is before, this is after. Remember, we just brighten up some areas in uh we just brighten up some areas in the image that was looking too dark, and we are good to go. Press enter. So the last thing between is to go into our camera roll and add some vignette effect on the image, and we are good to go. Okay, so once you are done, just open up your filter, go to Camera Raw, Filter. Once it's open, go all the way down to Effect, reduce your vignette just like this to add some vignette to the image and open up your shadows so that these areas will as well open up in the image. So once you do that, press OK. And the last effect we're going to apply in this image is our photo filter, of course. So I'm just going to go all the way to the cooling effect and try to reduce it. So doing this, I notice that her face is slightly dark in the image. So I'm just going to go to my curves, increase the brightness, press Ctrl I, pick up my brush and just painting some brightness into her face. And we are good to go. So let me show you the overall before and after. So this is the original image that we wanted it to look like this was this is the one that we have here. So just with a little adjustment, you're able to get something that looks so, 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 so amazing for your work. If you enjoyed this video, go straight down to the comment section and comment what you learned in the video and comment the kind of video you would also want us to do for you in future times. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you do that, make sure that your notification bell is turned on so that you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you.